greatest weapon of all. First step in solving any problem is recognizing there is one. It's time we started twisting. Pain isn't something we thought. All we can ever do for our heroes is remember them. And they gave up two lives. The one they were living in and the one they would have lived. They gave up everything for our country, for us. They pray for freedom and justice. Some veterans not getting the timely care that they need. Less than 1% of Americans serving in uniform. Good news is, is that in recent years, we've made historic investments to boost the VA budget. What is it? Why should we care? We should care about press freedom because... Because we were informed. In democratic societies, free, diverse, and pluralist media enable public debates and are essential checks You don't look status. Let's discuss. Hey guys, uh, welcome to Vet to Vet podcast, new episode. Um, today we are talking about VA uh, um, secondary conditions to diabetes. Uh, as a short reminder, Vet to Vet is a non-profit educational project dedicated to assist uh, veterans with adjustment to civilian lifestyle and to provide assistance in uh, obtaining your VA and other available benefits uh, you have earned. So diabetes uh, falls under the endocrine system, which is a network of glands that create hormones to help regulate the body. These hormones could uh, control the growth of new cells and metabolism, and some organs like the kidney also help uh, in producing hormones. So the endocrine system is made up of of, uh, hypothalamus, uh, thymus, pituitary gland, uh, thyroid gland, parathyroid glands, adrenal glands, pineal glands, reproductive glands, and the pancreas. And all these parts work together to keep the body in balance. So the diabetes uh, is a metabolic disease. And it can cause wide range of uh, medical issues. And veterans who are service-connected for diabetes can develop a secondary condition. And when you develop that secondary condition, you are qualified for VA disability benefits. So if you want, you can check uh, the previous podcast that we had uh, on diabetes on season two, episode eight. But today we're gonna focus a little bit more on uh, secondary conditions uh, caused by diabetes. So let's let's go into the topic. Yeah. So. There's definitely a lot of secondary issues that come with diabetes and uh, diabetes medications. Diabetes type 2 is a chronic condition that affects the way an individual's body metabolizes glucose or sugar. With type 2 diabetes, a person's body either resists the effects of insulin, a hormone that regulates the movement of sugar into your cells, or does not produce enough insulin to maintain normal glucose levels. Signs and symptoms of type 2 diabetes often develop gradually over time. However, the most common symptoms include the following. Increased thirst, frequent urination, increased hunger, unintended weight loss, fatigue, blurred vision, slow healing sores, frequent infections, areas of darkened skin, usually in the armpits and neck. Again, type 2 diabetes occurs when the body becomes resistant to insulin or when the pancreas is unable to produce enough insulin. However, the exact cause for type 2 diabetes remains unknown. Current research suggests that genetics and environmental factors are both contributing factors. So, uh, what what can you say about VA service connection for diabetes, about presumptive service connection? Yeah, so the Institute of Medicine concluded in in its 2000 report, Veterans and Agent Orange, herbicide dioxin exposure and type 2 diabetes, as well as subsequent updates that there is a limited suggestive evidence of an association between exposure to herbicides and type 2 diabetes. As a result, diabetes type 2 is included on the VA's list of presumptive conditions associated with exposure to Agent Orange. Veterans who served in some of the following areas during the specified time periods and later developed diabetes type 2 does not have to prove a connection between their condition in military service to receive disability compensation or VA health care. You just got to prove that you were in these periods and that you're diagnosed with diabetes. Veterans with boots on the ground and those serving 
on inland waterways in Vietnam between January 9th, 1962 and May 7th, 1975. Blue Water Navy vets who served within 12 nautical miles seaward of the demarcation line of Vietnam between the same dates. Veterans who flew on or worked on C-123 aircraft during the Vietnam War era. Veterans who served along the Korean Demilitarized Zone or the Korean DMZ between September 1st, 1967 and August 31st, 1971. Importantly, this list does not include Vietnam veterans who served in Thailand as they are not included under the VA's presumption of exposure. However, VA recognizes that herbicides were used along the perimeter of certain Royal Thai Air Force bases in Thailand to increase visibility and prevent guerrilla attacks during the following time periods between January 9, 1962 and May 7, 1975. VA says they will concede exposure for Thailand, Thailand veterans if they were on or near the perimeter through credible evidence, official records, or lay evidence. Therefore, to receive service connection compensation for diabetes and type 2 and Thailand veterans must show on a factual basis that they were exposed to Agent Orange during their service and have current diagnosis of this condition. So for the Thailand vets, it's almost like basically filing a normal disability claim where you got to show everything that you got to prove yourself. So direct service connection. Yeah. So veterans with diabetes type 2 do not qualify for presumptive service connection can still receive disability benefits but must prove the following a current diagnosis of diabetes type 2, an in-service event, injury or illness, and medical nexus linking the diabetes to the in-service and incurrence. So if you were first diagnosed with diabetes while you're in service, you can still file for it. Even if you're a Gulf War vet, Iraq vet, Afghan vet, it doesn't matter. So how VA rates diabetes? Diabetes type 2 is rated by the VA under the 38 CFR 4.119 under the diagnostic code 7913. Ratings for type 2 diabetes vary among veterans based on the progression or severity of their condition. And below are the criteria the VA has set in place to rate veterans with type 2 diabetes. 100%, which is very rare and you certainly do not want it, is requiring more than one daily injection of insulin, restricted diet, and regulation of activities, avoidance of strenuous occupational and recreational activities, with episodes of uh, ketoacidosis or hypoglycemic reactions requiring at least three hospitalizations per year or weekly visits to a diabetic care center, plus either progressive loss of weight and strength or complications that would be compensationable if separately evaluated. So you don't want to be 100%. 60% requiring one or more daily injections of in insulin, restricted diet and regulation of activities with episodes of ketoacidosis or hypoglycemic reactions requiring one or two hospitalizations per year or twice a month visits to a diabetic care provider plus complications that would not be compensationable if separately evaluated. 40% requiring one or more daily injections of insulin, restricted diet, and regulation of activities. 20% requiring one or more daily injections of insulin, restricted diet, oral hyperglycemic agent, and restricted diet, and 10% managed by restricted diet only. Usually on a given average, you're looking somewhere around the 10 to 40 range. For most vets, hopefully you don't hit the 60 or the 100. Yeah. Like sometimes uh, we uh, presume that uh, abuse people uh, generally uh, are more susceptible to get diabetes uh, as, a, as a condition, medical condition. But uh, like as but the truth is that, you know, everybody, uh, even like a skinnier person can get diabetes. So like right now we're going to talk about obesity as an intermediary step. As a general matter, obesity is not actually a disability for VA compensation purposes. In other words, you cannot receive service connection for obesity. However, you can use 
BCD as an intermediate step to get to secondary service connection. This is important when discussing secondary service connections for type 2 diabetes because type 2 diabetes and obesity are actually linked. If you have obesity, you are more prone to develop type 2 di diabetes. Many veterans experience this for multiple reasons, whether they have different service-connected conditions that preclude exercise or they are on certain medications that cause weight gain. For example, you have a service-connected knee condition that prevents you from being able to move around a lot. As a result, you become obese and as a result of obesity, you develop type 2 diabetes. As long as the knee condition is service-connected, diabetes can be service-connected as well as a secondary. So. It gets a little harder to tie the knots and show the show how they're connected, but it's but it's a truth and you can get them connected. It just gets a little harder. Secondary conditions. Due to the chronic nature of type 2 diabetes, complications can develop that may warrant separate disability ratings for secondary conditions. Secondary conditions stemming from the type 2 diabetes must be at least likely as not or 51% caused or aggravated by diabetes in order for a veteran to be compensated for them. To be rated separately for a secondary condition or complications, the condition must not have been considered in your initial rating decision. Below are some secondary conditions that can emerge when type 2 diabetes progresses or is uncontrolled. Very common one is the diabetic peripheral neuropathy. That's the nerve damage in your hands and your toes. You get the little tingles and the lightning bolts. Uh, renal kidney dysfunction, a big one. Diabetic retinopathy. You could certainly go blind from it. You, know, you could lose vision thanks to cataracts, things like that. Erectile dysfunction, especially with the associated medications that come with it. Cardiac conditions such as coronary artery disease, heart attack, and stroke. And arteriosclerosis, which is hardening of the arteries. Another real common one is hypertension, the high blood pressure. Peripheral vascular disease, which is narrowing the blood vessels. Uh, certain skin conditions and eye conditions other than the diabetic retinopathy, such as cataracts. Yeah, and... Um as a general, like a general rule to apply for service connection for one of these secondary conditions, veterans must uh, file a claim the same way that they would uh, file an initial claim for the disability benefits. And from there, veteran uh, must demonstrate two things to VA. So a current diagnosis of diabetes type 2 and medical evidence showing the relationship uh, between the primary service connected condition uh, for example, diabetes type 2 and the secondary condition. And importantly, the secondary condition must be at least as likely as not caused or aggravated by the veteran's type 2 diabetes. Uh, like a very common uh, uh, thing is uh, to have secondary conditions from diabetes uh, uh, due to Agent Orange. And uh, we, we're going to talk a little bit about that. So secondary con conditions from diabetes you could claim due to Agent Orange coronary artery disease. In this chronic disease, arterial sclerosis narrows the, the coronary arteries, the arteries supplying blood to the heart muscle. As the coronary arteries narrow, the chest pain called an angina may be triggered, and the risk of a heart attack the myocardial infraction, which occurs when a coronary artery is blocked completely, is increased. Coronary artery disease currently affects 11 million people in the United States. So when it comes to heart disease, during active infection with, with uh, valvular heart damage and for three months following sensation of therapy for act for the active infection, it will be rated at 100%. After, with documented by findings on the physical examination and either an echocardiogram, Doppler echocardiogram, or cardiac catheterization resulting in uh, chronic congestive heart failure or a workload of three METs or less. 
that result in uh, dyspensia, fatigue, angina, dizziness, or cinescope, or left ventricular dysfunction with an ejection fraction of 30 to 50 percent will be rated at 60 percent. And so the METs are really just how fast do you get tired and want to fall over, basically. Workloads of greater than five METs, but not greater than seven METs, result in dyspensia, fatigue, angina, dizziness, or cinescope, or evidence of cardiac hypertrophy or dilation on an electrocardiogram or an echocardiogram or x-ray. And that will be rated at 30%. Workload of greater than seven METs, but not, not greater than 10 METs results in dyspensia, fatigue, angina, dizziness, or cinescope, or continuous medication required, 10%. So these conditions are very similar in the way they are rated. They fall under the diagnostic code 7001 endocardis. Very similar to the heart conditions the way it's rated and and with the METs. So, 7002 is the pericarditis and rated very similar to the chronic heart failure. You know, but keep looking them up, check them out. There's a lot of secondary issues like your body's one whole system, so when one thing starts messing with you, something else in mind's going to start playing games too. So look into it. Um, that's it, guys, for today uh, for secondary conditions uh, due to diabetes type 2. And uh, as always, uh, do you have any uh, book or stuff, uh, movie to recommend? Yes. Uh, the Deftones. A rock band came out with their new album, I think it's their eighth album, called Ohms, O-H-M-S. Check it out, they're a really great band that has never dropped at all. They are an amazing band. Go support them. And a quote or words of wisdom of the day? Thoughts become the experiences you live. Yeah, said by Ianla Van Zandt. That's it, guys. Thank you for listening. Until next time, over and out. Thank you.